Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the Second Day in Extra Channel and today I'm sitting with Gavin Tyson. How do you pronounce it correctly? That was uh, actually correct. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, last year, we might as well start there. Absolutely incredible year. Cookshire, like results here, there and everywhere, beating the best sprinters in the world. And how was it for you the whole season? Oh, it was amazing actually. Yeah. Um, like I, be I beat uh, some some big big names actually uh, well Wellsford's so, dominating yeah, now yeah, and yeah, you beat yeah, him yeah, yeah that's also motivating me now so uh, yeah it's, it's really nice to see that he's not he's now flying also in the uh, in, uh, down under so uh, yeah I think uh, it also shows that the, the, the level that I, I had last year that was also quite high and uh, yeah it's nice to, to see that uh, yeah that uh, but he already won three races, so... What was it kind of like? Because you can have the best numbers in terms mm. of a sprint, but mm. it's uh, about getting a position and the mm. confidence in a mm. sprint. So what was the things that kind of gelled for you last year? Yeah, we also need to... Yeah, I think I, I immediately I, I have the numbers to, to, to win, actually. But um, like there's also a difference between uh, being a, not in a good position and being in a good position. And uh, starting a sprint from the first line is also a big uh, difference. And uh, you see it also now with Sam. Okay, last year he did also amazing with DSM. But now you see when he's with Bora that he's always starting a sprint in a winning position, actually, in second or third position. And then he's starting in... Yeah, yeah, others are not able to beat him, so yeah, I think it's quite clear that uh, you, ha you, you have to get the, the numbers, but also you have to have the position before you can pr produce the numbers and yeah, to make it into results, so uh, it's not always easy, you can uh, maybe do a better sprint uh, watts-wise than uh, being with a less sprint, you can get a better result with, uh, yeah, that's what I mean, like, if you do, sometimes I do amazing sprint, and I'm six or seven. And all those other times I do, I'm not the best, not best legs, and, and don't feel good. And yeah, and then you're in the right position, and you launch your sprint, and you win. It's like, yeah, it's not like luck, but sometimes you have also, you have to have every, every, yeah, everything in, in the right place at the right time, and then uh, you're able to win, yeah. How like how do you train for these things? Because when you look at like on like on a race, it's like mm. you're all kind of just like crazy. Yeah. yeah. How do you how do you train for that in like a training? For that part, we don't really train. I just watch the other spins, like I said just now from uh, now to another and all the races. I anal analyze every spin, but in the end, yeah, for me it's really important that I go two times or actually at least one time in a week to the gym and the rest of the trainings are a lot focused on the sprint uh, just uh, muscle power uh, not so long efforts only uh, short efforts and uh, full gas and uh, giving everything you have in your body and then uh, hopefully um, the trainings th that you do are uh, also leading up to better results and uh, that's always the thing i keep in mind when i'm training yeah. i mean this year um is what's kind of the goal for you? Is it a Grand Tour start? Is it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I go to the Giro d'Italia this year, so uh, I, if you see already the field, it's going to be uh, massive there. But yeah, in the end, uh, I, have, I have also two legs and also have uh, legs to win. And uh, you see it also last year, I beat some, some big names, so, uh, so why not? Uh, I'm going to try for it. But also, um, the rest of my program is getting a little bit harder. Like uh, last year, I did uh, most of the smaller races in Belgium. But this year I'm going also to Algarve, to Paris Nice, to the, the bigger kind of races before the Giro. So it's also gonna, it's going to make me a, a little, little bit stronger also uh, leading up to the Giro. Yeah. Do you prefer more kind of a complete flat than kind yeah. of a... You wouldn't be... Milan San Remo wouldn't be something... No, no, you have to be honest also and realistic. Like uh, I'm really a, a flat type of sp sprinter. Okay, like Limburg I won, it was a little bit uphill, like 400 meter. But not like Milan Sarim, like you have a really climb there before. Um, actually, it is my dream race, but I think <laughs> it's never going to be, uh, I'm never going to be able to win it. Uh, the race has changed a lot as well. That's, that's yeah. what it is. Like, uh, like also, um, I'm doing Kuren and Brussel Kuren this year. It's also a home, uh, quite a home race. Um, in the past, you have to say, yeah, maybe it's uh, possible that it's a, that it's a bench sprint. Okay, still, it still is, but with the... Uh, yeah, with the cycling at this moment, you have to be realistic, and it's going to be really difficult to have there a full bench sprint. <laughs> like in the past, it was maybe it was like after omloop, everyone thought, okay, tomorrow we have Kurne, it's going to be a bench sprint. But now in the modern cycling, it's not the 
not like that logic logic anymore. I mean, we do have a great race in Denmark called the Tour of Denmark, and that's mm -hmm. pretty flat. So, yeah, hopefully the team does it, then, <laughs> and then I can go. I did it in the past already, so uh, it was quite a nice race. But uh, yeah, if the, if the team goes, uh, why not? I mean, how do you prepare for your Grand Tour as a sprinter? We've all seen like the horrendous cutoff times, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, I did uh, two times in Vuelta before. Yeah, it was it was also really hard for me because yeah, like you like you said, uh, as a sprinter you're not able to to train really long um, because if you train really long, it's gonna make you slower. And then you have also to find the right balance. You mean like uh, what I mean like um, also the the right weight to to survive the mountains, but also be fast. It's like yeah, it's a really balance. So. Uh, yeah, we have to, to check it out also with my trainer now and then uh, we have to decide which weight he thinks is the is the best and which training leads up to the to the Grand Tour start. Uh, but I'm quite confident that it will be, uh, it will be okay. Pinyam Gamay is in the team as mm -hmm. well and you two are kind of the spearheads mm -hmm. for the team right now. How has mm -hmm. it kind of been? Yeah, it was really good. Like um, We went in December together to training camp to here in uh, Kalpe together and uh, yeah. The, the connection between me and Binyam is only getting better every day. So, uh, yeah, like also we are, uh, I, we are uh, doing some of the same races also. So um, I have to be also realistic. Like, uh, okay, I'm not going to do Milan Sanremo, but if, <laughs> if it's quite like, uh, yeah, for a for example, if uh, if it's a race that is a really hill in the, in the final of, of 15k to go or for, for 5k to go, then uh, I'm also realistic that it's for him there in the sprint, but also. I think he knows if it's a really flat, flat sprint um, that he can bring me in a good position and then we are uh, really a good duo together. So it, it will be really great to see this uh, this year. Yeah. How, like, comparing last year, this time last year exactly, let's say that mm -hmm. team presentation last year and then this year, mm -hmm. do you feel like you opted even, like, opted another level? Yeah, for sure. Um, also, not only mentally, but also physically, but f for example, mostly also mentally because like you have also to like I'm now a leader in the team like before it was always so difficult for me to believe that I'm a leader now in this team like the guys that here that they're working for me that they're giving 150 percent that they give everything to get me to the right position it's not it's not always easy to believe it and um, you have to also work on that and that's now developing in the last two years uh, we did that develop a lot and uh, yeah now uh, hopefully it's uh, yeah it's time for uh, for some uh, crazy results. Yeah. We discussed already a lot my program for this year and then uh, it was like in the end, uh, like maybe the selection of the European Championships, uh, it's going to be possibly a punch sprint, but then in the end, yeah, you have also to be uh, realistic in Belgium, it's not going to be easy to get a sprinter a selection in a, in a European Championship, for example, because we have so many sprinters. Like in the past, I remember four or five years ago when I was still junior, I remember the guys were saying, yeah, we don't have sprinters in Belgium and blah, blah, blah. And now you see, they're all like <laughs> yeah. all crazy, like Jordi Meus, Tim Merlier, Philips, everyone, even Arnaud Delis, everyone is already winning. And yeah, it goes so fast, uh, actually. But, well, we might as well finish with two questions. First of all, what race, well, what race do you want to win this year? <laughs> and it probably rhymes with Smiro. Uh, and uh, what race would you like to win in the future and who's your inspiration as well that okay yeah for example yeah for me personally the the race that i really hope to win this year is a stage in the okay it's not a particular stage uh, so one of the 21 stages in the, the in the giro one. The, mountain the mountain one, one that for sure <laughs> uh, that's gonna be the goal no uh, i mean uh, you have to be realistic also so yeah the flat flat sprints in the giro um yeah, it needs to be completely flat, um, and then uh, yeah, um, for the future is uh, yeah like every guy, young uh, guy, I'm all yeah. This is a stage in the, in the Tour de France. It's the biggest race in the world. Um, as a sprinter, it's uh, more realistic than yeah than for some other uh, riders, I think. But yeah, it's not going to be easy to get there first because it's a childhood dream. But if I'm there. Yeah, hopefully in the future I ever can win there and then, uh, then my career for myself is, uh, is done. No, but, but it, it's, uh, <laughs> no, 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 it's a joke, but no, it's like a, a dream. Eh? And then uh, for, uh, for examples, I, in the past I had, uh, I had a lot of examples. Um, I remember uh, watching um, uh, the World Championships in Valkenburg in, uh, in, in the Netherlands and uh, Philippe Gilbert. Uh, was uh, smashing it on the cobalt <laughs> yeah. and then uh, 
I remember we were watching it, me and my dad, when we were, were going there, and the next day I immediately bought a, I bought a bike, and then uh, we went training, and that was my biggest inspiration, and then uh, I had the privilege to to be at Lotto in the same team with him, and then uh, so sometimes we, we, we were together in the room, and then uh, it was quite special, like, then I said also to him, like, you realize that I started cycling because of you, and then, yeah, but then for, yeah, when I was older and older, getting older, it was also like, uh, yeah, I remember yeah, Mark Cavendish smashing it uh, in the tour, like, yeah, he wins every flat sprint, and yeah, it was amazing to see. If You've he... actually beaten Mark Cavendish. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's also a childhood dream now, but yeah, he's 34 uh, in the tour, it's, and also his partner is it's impressive. And uh, yeah, sometimes when I watch him and I see him, then I'm quite spe speechless, actually. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for that, Kevin Tyson. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, man.